Carlo with Race to Walk. Thanks for joining me. And today is going to be a little bit of a story time, a little bit of a rant, and a little bit of a word to the wise to anybody who writes or publishes things. But before we get started a little bit about this channel, here we share good thoughts about good words, normally. Today is about putting out good words and the challenges that come with that. But I host a live Bible study on Instagram at Race to Walk, and then I publish two videos a week. I publish a replay of that Bible study and then also a video about books. So if you are interested in either, either of those things, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like it, share it with some friends, and make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you get updates about new videos. So a little bit of the story time. A couple weeks ago, I did a video about um, an announcement for the new issue of an unexpected journal on George MacDonald. And I have a number of videos um, that about George MacDonald's books and also he makes it on a lot of my list videos. And so if you're interested in that, I'm going to link to the playlist so you can watch some of those and get familiar with his works if you're not familiar already. But anyway, I've mentioned in a couple of my videos that I work on an unexpected journal, which is we publish issues quarterly on different topics and it's devoted to cultural apologetics. So anyway, when we started it in 2018, totally bootstrap. The easiest way forward to putting out a print version was with a print on demand service like through at the time it was create space when we when we started. So that's just what we've done. And I think it's worked out pretty well. I put together the print and the digital manuscripts and I get them you know, publish on the dis different distribution platforms that we use, Amazon, Barnes Nobles, and a lot of the, the uh, digital booksellers. So I have a, t a template set up for the journal in Word. And so I have all our front matter, all our back matter, and then I have sections already set up for different essays. So all I have to do is pop it in. There. And then you would think that the assembly would be pretty much done and it would be ready to go, right? No. So up until I started doing this, I would have assumed that words styles in a document were similarly to CSS styles like on a website. So if you have a website, then the styles are all your paragraphs, styles, and the heading styles, and your block quotes, those are set in a style sheet. And so if you change the theme with to a different style sheet, everything else changes to match that new um, those new styles and that new theme. Unless if you have something formatted in an inline style which then you have to go manually change it, which is why you never do inline styles. You always want to make sure it's in a style sheet. I would assume that if somebody had their paragraphs and their headings set in a certain way on their computer, that when I Im imported it into my Word document, that also had things formatted as normal text, headings, block quotes, that it would change to match the styles of my document. It doesn't. It does not change. Except for sometimes. Sometimes it does. So that's where the fun part comes in. So we have, you know, all these different writers in you know, like 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 different people contributing. They all have their own platforms. They all have different programs they're using. They all have different versions of the programs that they're using. And then those are uh, imported into Google Docs. So where we're doing our editing. And then once all the editing is finalized, then I download it and put it in. So most of the time, um, it, if I take a person's essay and and put it into the journal manuscript the styles don't automatically change i have to manually format every single paragraph every single block quote every single heading every single footnote except for sometimes it does work like when zach submits an essay his work like i would expect it to where i don't have to manually format everything out of three years and 12 issues there's been maybe a handful that automatically format to the, the uh, journal settings when I import it. So I don't know why that is. Like mine don't do that. I have to like manually format mine. So, okay. so that's just the way it is. So I know that whenever I'm working on it, one of the things is, is I'm just going to have to format every single, every single thing in that document to match the journal style. Okay, that's a given. Oh, and then the other fun thing, sometimes even when I format a paragraph, it's like sometimes the old styles stick. So specifically, the like if a title is italicized in a paragraph, sometimes it won't format to the set font in uh, the journal document style. So I have to go back and pick that one out and format that individually. Same thing with footnotes, major headache major headache. I can format the footnotes and then there'll be sometimes the fonts won't change or the font size won't change. Anyway, it takes a lot, it takes a lot of effort just to getting the, the formatting to be consistent. Why? I don't know. If there's like some secret to make, to taming styles and word, please let me know. Let me know because this is driving me crazy. 
So, but anyway, this is all normal stuff. All normal stuff. So this last issue, I don't know what was going on, but I would go through and I like literally when I check it, I will check certain things. Like I'll check all the article titles. I'll check the footnotes. I'll check, you know, scan for block quotes to make sure that those are all uniform. And I try to look at one thing each time. And sometimes I'd be going through them and I'm thinking, I already changed this. I already changed this. What the heck? I already changed this. I went through it so many times. And I would save it and I'd come back to it. I'm like, how did I miss this? I know I changed this. And I started getting paranoid because I'm thinking, there's, if I thought I changed this and this is something I always check, but it's not saved, then like, what am I missing? There was, and then it was doing like these really weird errors. It was like, it was hanging, word hang in general hangs a lot, but it was hanging more than normal when I was trying to export um, a PDF. I got this weird error that Word didn't have the enough memory to export a PDF. A lot of weird stuff. So what I've noticed in the past year in general with, with Microsoft Windows, that they'll just do updates without any notification. And when they do, it usually, there's a lot of junk left after that update and it will slow down the computer. So sometimes it just takes my computer like running like sludge before I think, okay, well maybe Windows did an update and I go through and do a scan and oh yeah, lo and behold, there's all these registry errors that I have to clean up. So this was so bad, I was thinking, is, is my hard drive failing? I mean, it was almost, my computer was almost unusual, unusable. It was horrible. So finally, I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. I was doing, you know, disk scans, I'm just trying to get through to a point where I could finish this journal issue. I closed everything out, rebooted, scanned everything, and oh yeah, there were some registry errors in there. So I was thinking, okay, there must have been some sort of update that's causing this problem. So then I was able to kind of go forward, got it all done, got it uploaded. Okay, I'm thinking, thank you, Lord. Finally got this finished. I was beginning to think I wasn't gonna get there, but finally got through it. So then I'm scanning down Facebook. I see a post by someone who's in a PhD graduate program. She said, I just lost a paper. I was 10 pages into, lost my research. She's like, I don't even know where to begin to start to try to reconstruct it. Was not coming back on auto on auto recovery. And so then there's all these people commenting below that, that said they had the same thing happen, like just real recently in the last week. So her issues are, were about the same time as I was having issues and when I was trying to put together the journal and I said, well, maybe if Word or Windows did an update, maybe that caused part of the problem. And she said she had just updated Word right before she lost the document. So I'm thinking, maybe that was my problem. Maybe that was part of the problem. All these things that I had thought I had changed, that when I go back, they weren't. Maybe that was a saving problem or something. So. These are my thoughts about this. I don't really use Word unless if I'm formatting, really formatting the journal or formatting something else that I need to submit. But I do use Excel a lot and I've been, I did have some weird saving issues with, um, I've been tracking our local COVID num numbers since the end of July. I have a, an Excel file that is kind of my working copy and then I've been copying and pasting it to a Google spreadsheet because there's some people that I've been sharing that information with. And so I'm in this little group of people locally that, and some of them are also tracking COVID numbers, different things. So a few months ago, I go to update the spreadsheet and I clicked on the shortcut to, for my desktop to bring it up and it pulled it from a recovery file. It was like it had, the file had been deleted. And I was thinking, holy crap, what, what was that about? So anyway, so that was one thing. So after that, I started saving the spreadsheet to another backup in another location because I thought I'm not losing all this information. So then after that, after that initial like disappearance of the file, um, I there were other times when I would open it up and it would be like the just weird things that happened, like some headings or columns were hidden. Um, there was another day I had opened it and there was like data loss, like there were a couple days that it, like it was like an older version, like I hadn't updated it. Um, I was able to get it off of, since I have it online and, you know, in another location, I was able to get that information, but I was like, that is just really, it's weird. Then after all of those things had happened, another person who has been tracking uh, COVID numbers longer than I have, she's been tracking it since April, uh, sent me a message and said, hey, I went to go open my file and it was like literally, it wasn't just a few days, so when she opened it up, she had lost like four months of data. So my thought is that maybe there's an issue with 
the version control or something with the, the auto recovery function that's not right in in Microsoft Office products. I don't know. I mean, I just, the only two I really use out of the Office Suite are Word and Excel. And obviously it's not just me that is having issues with that. So um, words of the wise, if you are publishing anything, uh, make sure that you have a backup. And I personally would have a backup under a different name. If you are having a really like a big document and you're working on it for a long time, maybe save it as a different file name than your working copy. So you at least you have, you know, you have certain points. Uh, back it up in a couple of spots. So th those are my thoughts about maybe what was happening. I think 2021 might just be the year I need to, I'm going to have to buckle down and learn a different program to format the journal because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. All the issues that I've had with trying to get this manuscript in a correct format. Oh my gosh, it's so frustrating. That's my story. That's my rant. This has been the, the frustration of the past couple of weeks is just fighting with Fighting with work, trying to get everything done and discovering that things that I had spent all this time on fixing did not actually save. So if you have suggestions for me on how to make Word work better, or if you just think I should bang Word and go to a different program, let me know. So anyway, that's my story. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.